We begin in the bunkhouse at dusk. George, one of the main characters, is talking to Slim, the head mule driver on the ranch. Slim has given a puppy to Lenny, George's best friend. George is grateful and thanks him. Why isn't it up to Lenny to say thanks? Well, George tends to be Lenny's voice. It's an act of friendship. Although he is a physically strong adult, Lenny experiences the world like a child due to his intellectual disability. Slim wonders how a cuckoo like Lenny and smart guy like George wound up travelling together. George feels like talking to Slim and tells him that he and Lenny both came from a town called Auburn. Lenny was brought up by his Aunt Clara, whom George knew. Once Aunt Clara died, Lenny came out working with George. He makes it sound so simple, doesn't he? Slim listens to George's story and agrees that Lenny is a nice fella. Still, George feels lonely. Meaningful conversations aren't possible with Lenny. George can't help telling Slim about what happened in Weed after Lenny touched a girl in a red dress. He just wanted to feel the softness of her dress. He didn't mean to frighten her. But she claimed Lenny raped her. What a lie! Lenny and George spent the day hiding in a ditch from the crowd that wanted to avenge the girl by killing Lenny. Phew! That was a narrow escape. While George and Slim are chatting, Lenny comes in with his new, tiny puppy. Lenny can't resist the urge to pat it, even though George warns him that he'll kill it. Maybe Lenny's limitations make it impossible for him to be gentle. That's really sad for him. It's getting dark now, and two more men enter the bunkhouse. Candy, the old swamper who takes care of the bunkhouse, and Carlson, a ranch hand. Candy has his sick old dog with him, and Carlson's annoyed by how frail and stinky it is. Carlson wonders why Candy doesn't shoot it. Candy loves his old dog. He's had it from a pup and would be lonely without it. Ignorant of Candy's connection to the dog, Carlson offers to shoot it and put it out of its misery. He suggests that Candy take one of Slim's pups as a replacement, as if the dog was a pair of old boots. Candy is powerless. He looks around to the other men for help, but no one defends him against Carlson. Carlson takes out his pistol and leads the dog out into the dark. Candy can't show his feelings to the other men, so he just lays in his bed, paralysed. Silence descends on the room, then... A shot rings out in the distance. It's done. Crooks comes in, always an outsider as an African-American. He lets Slim know that Lenny is messing around with the pups in the barn. Now, Crooks is an intelligent man, but he doesn't feel comfortable telling Lenny off. Lenny may have a disability, but he's white. Can you see how the hierarchy works on this ranch? Slim and Crooks leave to sort out Lenny. Meanwhile, Wit's keen to talk about the wife of Curly, the ranch owner's son. According to Wit, she's got the eye going all the time on everybody. But it's not as if Wit is squeaky clean either. He spends his time off with prostitutes in town and invites George to join him. George says he might come along, but he's not keen to spend much money. He and Lenny are saving up. Lenny's now been sent back to the bunkhouse and lays on his bunk watching the men talk. He wants George to tell him about their dream of being able to live on the fat of the land again. George tells him about a place they might be able to get, a place with a windmill and a shack, with chickens and fruit trees. But all Lenny cares about is being able to take care of the rabbits. All the men dream about is having a home to settle in. 
George talks about raising pigs, catching salmon in the river, and having a veggie garden. It's a vision that puts him in a blissful trance. Anything is possible in a dream. Candy asks if he can be in on the plan. He's got some savings. No one treats him well on the ranch because he's old. Candy would leave George and Lenny the money in his will if they allowed him to join them. George isn't sure. The dream belongs to him and Lenny. But Candy has money, and George and Lenny only have $10 between them. The dream could come true if they work together. Candy is excited. He's afraid that the men will get rid of him soon, just like they did to his dog. He lost his hand in a farm accident and won't be able to work for much longer. The plan is to work like anyone else, take their pay and go off and buy the ranch. It's a deal. Their conversation is interrupted by Curly, Slim and Carlson. They're arguing about Curly's wife. Lenny is still smiling about the idea of owning a ranch when Curly picks on him. Why is Lenny grinning at him? He viciously smashes Lenny's nose and punches him in the stomach, winding him badly. Lenny is terrified, but only shields himself. He doesn't fight back. Lenny is soon covered in his own blood, so George orders Lenny to lay into Curly. At this, Lenny grabs Curly's fist with one hand, and Curly's body flops to the ground. George forces Lenny to let go because Lenny keeps his grip on Curly's hand out of fear. But it's too late. Curly's hand is crushed. Slim is horrified. It looks like every bone in Curly's hand is broken. Lenny is just confused and scared. The men plan to take Curly into town and get his hand fixed up. Slim warns Curly to tell everyone that his hand got caught in a machine. He'll only get laughed at if they know Lenny got the better of him. But let's forget about Curly and his issues for a while and learn about a more complex character, Crooks. Entrenched racism prevents him from sleeping in the bunkhouse with the other ranch workers. In the 1930s, it's accepted that crooks will live a very separate life from the white ranch workers. His real name isn't even Crooks. They call him that because he has a crooked back. Pretty mean, isn't it? Crooks lives alone, surrounded by harnesses and other equipment he needs in his role as stable buck. Unlike the other men, Crooks enjoys reading. He owns a dictionary and a copy of the California Civil Code. Seems Crooks is a bit of a brainiac. His eyes glitter with intensity and we learn that he is a proud, aloof man. It's Saturday night and everyone has gone out to enjoy themselves. Everyone except for Candy, Crooks and Lenny. They're outsiders. Lenny wanders into Crooks' room to see his puppy. Crooks is annoyed to be disturbed, and he lets Lenny know about it. Crooks knows that no one wants to be around him. He thinks Lenny is crazy, but appreciates having someone to talk to. In fact, Crooks wants to tell Lenny all about himself. We learn that Crooks grew up on his father's chicken ranch and that there's only one African-American family in Soledad, the nearest town. No wonder Crooks feels alone. Candy comes in to talk to Lenny about the dream of buying a ranch. It's the first time he's ever been into Crooks's room. That's how isolated Crooks is from the other men. Crooks doesn't believe in the dream. He's too much of a cynic. He's seen too many guys with land in their head, and none of them ever stick it out. But Crooks is feeling brave. He suggests that maybe he could work for them on their ranch. But their conversation is interrupted by Curly's wife. As usual, she's looking for Curly. Well, that's what she says, anyway. Lenny is fascinated by her beauty. Just like the men, Curly's wife is lonely. 
It's Saturday night, and she would love to be out. She had dreams and hopes of her own. Someone once told her they could put her in the movies. Candy is dismissive of Curly's wife and tells her that we ain't got nothing to say to you at all. Will Candy's words be enough to drive Curly's wife away? Or will she try other, riskier ways to seek company on the ranch? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.